Welcome back to the ABAP Objects Refresher. Now we're on Module 3 and we're talking about object modeling. So how do you write down objects and classes and relationships on, in diagrams, specifically about UML, which is called the Unified Modeling Language, which has been kind of now um, the language, the notation that is uniform in all OO and books and everything. So basically it has superseded everything else that was there before. That's why we want to look at this briefly. Um, UML is a very rich modeling language. It has all kinds of things. We only need a few and we'll only look at a few aspects here that we really need. Um, first of all, the simplest thing is the class symbol, I mean the class box, if you will. And uh, you see clearly there's uh, three parts right now. There's the class name, then you have the attributes underneath, and then the methods. So if you want to quickly give an idea of what does this class do and um, what uh, is you know what is the essence of it and so forth you can put this in a, this way into a diagram and um, sometimes you want to focus on relationships and this is when you do it this way and you don't show the attributes and methods but you only show the class names and their associations or relationships and this is a little more complicated but also uh, kind of important so we see a whole bunch of classes here and how they connect together and uh, <clears throat> Logically, you can see, okay, there's a rental. There's something about rental cars, obviously, or vehicles, rental companies. You can have a booking of a rental, which means that you have a customer to rental connection. There are vehicles that have wheels, and you can have different types of vehicles, obviously. And this already also kind of alludes to the different types of relationships. So you see, number, first, those uh, numbers, and, you know, from zero dot dot star and things like that, on the relationships. This has to do with cardinality and this will be described on the next slide. But here we want to explain uh, two different symbols that are important and one is the diamond and one is the uh, the triangle. Now the diamond if you look up uh, say let's say by example of the car of the rental and the vehicle um, or no let's take the vehicle and the wheel. Look at that you see that there is a diamond on the vehicle side. What this means is a vehicle contains uh, a few wheels, so it contains or you know has a few wheels, and this the, this kind of relationship denotes a um, part whole part relationship. So vehicle is the whole, and the wheels several of them are parts. Or if you look at the rental, a part of the rental is the vehicle or the vehicle assignment. So really, it should be there. It's not optional in any way. And it denotes, um, it, you can also read it as contains or is part of, depending on the direction. Now there's different kinds of diamonds, as you can see, the, the black one that is um, fully black and filled diamond, and the white diamond that is empty, white in the middle. And there the difference is about the strength of the, the coupling of the lifetime. If you look at um, the rental and the rental booking, for instance, if you have a rental, you must have a rental booking. If you delete the rental, the booking is also gone because it kind of belongs together. It's all the data with the booking and so forth. But uh, the customer obviously lives independently of the booking or the rental. Also the vehicle, so this is the strong coupling of lifetime. Um, if you look at rental and vehicle, the rental has an open diamond so yes, the vehicle is part of a rental, but if you delete the rental, the vehicle is not deleted. So the car is still in the lot, you can have another rental. So you can say yes, the vehicle is part of a rental, but the lifetime is independent. And the same goes for the wheels. While you may say, you know, you can take the wheel off and put it on another car, you know, that's uh, what this open diamond means. As you can see, the, the semantics of a open diamond with the general relationship like between rental booking and customer is kind of close together. So it really is more a semantic hint as saying, yeah, this is really part of that and you should consider it together versus two objects that live completely independently uh, of their in their lifetime uh, aspect. So the customer is really totally independent of the, of the rental. Um, the next thing is the um, the generalization or the triangle symbol, kind of like an arrow going up. And this is um, used in, in uh, object orientation in, to, to denote implementing interfaces or uh, class inheritance, which we'll come to later. 
But basically, in this sense here, uh, you see that the vehicle is a generalization of car, truck, and bus. So, in general, you have a vehicle, but it can be car, truck, and bus, and maybe the bus and truck and car classes can do different things in addition to what the vehicle can do. And so you would denote this in uh, object diagram, a class diagram this way. And we'll see more of that later when we come to interfaces and inheritance. Now on the um, association syntax of cardinality and names, um, it's just typical, if you're basically classical, if you're uh, familiar with the ER modeling, it's the same thing that you can you specify the cardinality on each side. So um, number one is if you have an arrow, it shows which way you can navigate. Uh, typically that is um, in, in relational systems, this is typically not done because you want to be able to navigate each way anyway. But um, this can be done, then the name of the association is with the arrow, so the customer books, the rental booking, for instance, that's how you read that. And then the cardinality says, um, so each booking has one customer, but a customer can have zero or many uh, bookings. So if you want to denote possible cardinalities uh, this way, that of course can be done. And of course it has implications um, on the implementation, so either you need a list of links to other objects, a list of references to other objects, or you would have a key uh, relationship, uh, foreign key relationship on the database. This really has some serious implications uh, in the code. Another diagram that is useful and that we'll also use in the course is the sequence diagram, and that really shows who calls who and in what order. So let's assume I have three classes here, the driver class, the car class, and the, the tank, you know, the gas tank. And then you would see here, okay, the driver calls a method at fuel level, and the car doesn't know it itself. It has to ask the tank, get fuel level, and then the tank gives you the value back, and the car gives the value back to the driver. So in this case, it's a, it's a simple pass-through of the car, but sometimes you do other things. You have another call or so, and the bars show how long... Uh, the call basically lives. So in this case, of course, it's a nested call, and it means that until the on the driver's side, um, you return with the return values um, until the car calls the car level call returns. So you can easily show the interaction of different uh, objects or classes in certain flows. So you can, in this case, really it's more focused about instances and classes because you want to say one instance of the driver calls an instance of a class and it has a tank or another instance of the tank and it typically to shows one scenario of flow so many times you have a few of these that describe the main flows of um, objects and how they interact with each other so this is the sequence diagram um, finally there is a term called CRC modeling and CRC stands for Classes, Responsibilities, Collaborations. This is um, not UML directly, but um, kind of a light version, if you will, if you want to do quick design and, and put stuff on the board and move things around to in an early stage, it is very useful. The notation is you have a card with three fields, really. You have a class name uh, at the top, and then you have responsibilities, which are just really like logical terms, you can just pure text and collaborations. So for instance, um, for a student you would say it has an address, it knows professors and roles in class and so forth. And then relationships is what you need for those things. So what does the student um, have kind of relationships and you can just specify the name of these and you don't have to draw the arrows and everything. So it's easy to have a new card and, and add a new relationship and so forth. You don't have to worry about um, alignment and, and rate, routing and so forth of, of relationships and stuff and um, it is rather abstract but good if you start to think about what kind of classes do I need and what do they really do and we'll use this in the course as well and often they're put on a board or even uh, with magnets on a whiteboard you can easily move them around it's a nice tool for design discussions Okay, that's enough on the uh, UML notation, and now next we're going to continue with Module 4.